Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today we'll be reviewing the last version of OS X. OS X El Capitan. Okay, so we are on the OS X El Capitan desktop. What's funny about this is that I'm not actually using my One Comma One Mac Pro like I did in the last video. First of all, that wouldn't screen record for some reason, it would just crash. But second of all, it's also very big, so I'm using a completely different computer that's not even a Mac. I'm using my HP Compact that you saw in the last video. Yes, it does work with OS X as long as you have an upgraded graphics card like I do. So that's kind of cool. You can see I've got 8 gigs of RAM in here. It's a Core 2 Duo CPU, so this system should very well be up to the task of demonstrating this operating system. So first, what are the first things that you would notice if you were upgrading from OS X Yosemite? Since we're doing this video kind of like after the Yosemite video, let's just see what the next version of OS X is like. It's kind of cool to see what the next version of OS X was like and just to go through it. The reason why I'm making this video is for a few reasons. One of which is because this is, like I said, the last version of Mac OS to be called OS X. They changed it to Mac OS when Sierra came out, but also this is the last version of Mac OS that supports legacy CPUs. So that would be any Core 2 Duo or any Xeon that does not actually support SSE 4, which is required in order to run Sierra or else it just doesn't even boot. What systems have these older legacy CPUs and theoretically should be able to run El Capitan? Well, here they are. You can actually see it's a pretty big list. To be fair, most of these computers you would not want to run El Cap on. Now, some of them are officially supported, like these were officially supported machines and just simply can't run anything past that because they have older CPUs. But also, you'll see that several of these machines didn't even support El Cap at all, and most of them you won't even have any kind of graphics acceleration with. So would be the best experience to run it on that system. The only few systems I would say would be worth it would be Mac Pros or Xserves. So with that being said, this HP Hackintosh that I've made will only run up to El Capitan. In fact, I can't even upgrade the CPU in this any further than I have. This originally had a Pentium 4, as I stated in the last video. Go watch it if you haven't. So this CPU that is in here, which is the Core 2 Duo E6700, will not run anything higher than OS X El Capitan. I thought, might as well make a video showing the differences between Yosemite and El Capitan, because El Capitan did have a lot of improvements for being the last version of macOS called OS X. First of all, let's look at the UI. You saw that I did this last time as well. I looked around up on the top here. You can see the font up here is actually San Francisco. El Capitan was the first version of macOS to introduce the new font style. And when iOS 9 was released alongside it, it also got the new font. So you can see up in the clock here as well that we've got the new font. You can also see that this is this is reflected everywhere. You can see it's in the icons here. It's down in the dock tooltips. You can see if I open up like my downloads folder, you can see the font is reflected in here. And you can see Quick Look also has it. This font is basically everywhere. There's only a few small areas where it wasn't in there, and I'm not going to show them right now. The next thing that I feel that I should bring up is... This was the first version of macOS to actually introduce the hiding and showing of this menu bar up here. Yosemite, you couldn't change this. You could On Yosemite, they added the dark menu bar and dock option to make these all dark. But El Cap was the first version to actually automatically hide and show the menu bar if you wanted to. And you can just put your cursor up here and you'll be able to see the menu bar and you can move it away. It saves screen space, so there's that. El Capitan was also the first version to add some accessibility features, such as when you shake the mouse pointer, you'll see it gets large. That was an El Cap feature. Yosemite did not have that. Very small detail, but I thought I might as well bring it up. Now, there are a few things in El Cap that, you know, were introduced that people didn't really like. First of all, let's open up the disk utility, and you'll notice immediately this looks different from Yosemite's disk utility. So this actually looks the way that it does today. Obviously Big Sur changed the way this looked a little bit, but this is the current style that we have with the disk utility. It's quite a bit different than the other one, and then people say it's a lot more inferior than the old one, and I completely agree with that. The old disk utility is heaps better than the new one, but the new one still does pretty much everything you need it to do. So like I can go up here. Most everything is just in the menu bar nowadays. It used to be buttons in here. But yeah, disk utility got an overhaul. A lot of people didn't like it, but that's a new thing that was released with El Capitan. 
Another thing that a lot of people did not like, and me included, system integrity protection was added with El Capitan. And I'm just going to open up a terminal just to prove that what I'm saying here. If I type in CSR util status, you can see system integrity protection status enabled. If you type this in on Yosemite, nothing would happen. It's like command not found. But on El Cap, this was the first version to introduce this, which added kex signing, file system protections, which you can see I have stuff enabled and disabled just because I want to hack and touch. So you can see a lot of this is disabled, but on a normal system, you'd see all these being enabled. So you can see NVRAM protections is on, all this. So it added a lot of security to macOS, and in order to disable this stuff, you'd have to actually run into your recovery partition and disable it. One thing that I will say that I find interesting about system integrity protection, though, is a lot of people get very annoyed by this, I honestly don't see a huge reason to disable it on LCAP. With newer versions of macOS, it breaks some stuff. Like, let's say if I want to create a Hackintosh bootable USB drive, I actually have to disable system integrity protection on Catalina and Big Sur for the utility to work, or else the entire thing just hangs. Finally, another feature, and this is going to be the last one I point out, is split screen was added in El Capitan. If you held the green button on Yosemite, nothing would happen. But if I hold the green button here, and you can see I've already done so, it lets you put windows in a split view, and I can put one here, and I can put one here, and you can actually stretch this window if you want to, make this one bigger, or make the other side bigger. Honestly, this is a very welcomed addition. I'm very happy that this computer, this HP, gets an OS with split screen, just because I use this feature all the time, so having this is super handy. They did actually change how this worked in Catalina, I think, maybe it was Mojave, but if you hold the green button, on Catalina, it'll just bring up a little menu instead saying do you want to tile it to the left or the right and then you can click the other window. So it's it's basically the same except you drag it, it's set, yeah, except you drag it to the left or right side on here. On Catalina, you don't do either of those things, you just click it. Oh, we have Safari open, I might as well show off a little bit of things in Safari. So if we go to the About Safari, you can see this version of Safari is 11.1.2. This is the latest version that you can run on LCAP, and it is one version newer than Yosemite. So you have a bit better support. This version came out with High Sierra, so you get all of the features of High Sierra Safari, unless there's specific features. Like, you don't get picture-in-picture -picture support because LCAP never had it, which is unfortunate that was a thing that was released in Sierra. Now, let's go over a few of the drawbacks that LCAP actually has over modern macOS. First of all, there's no Siri. Siri was not introduced until the next version of macOS, which was macOS Sierra. You could talk to Siri, have her do commands for you. LCAP did not have Siri. A few things that were also kind of changed with LCAP or some drawbacks is iMessage is even more limited on LCAP. Sierra added the tap back feature, which I guess in LCAP didn't exist at the time. And it also added, I think, sticker support for some things, although macOS was very, very limited with that and it still kind of is, but there were no animations, there were none of that, because this was basically iOS 9, and iOS 9 iMessage was just some texts, pictures, videos, wasn't anything special like tap back at the time where you could add thumbs up, thumbs down, all that to messages. It was just text, it was just text the people that you want to text. <laughs> FaceTime is also kind of unchanged from normal, or from newer macOS. Obviously there's group FaceTime now in newer macOS, and I know that the FaceTime app kind of got an overhaul in Monterey, which has not been released yet. But FaceTime works perfectly fine on LCAP. I've had no issues with it. You can see it still it shows all the calls and stuff. So that works out perfectly fine. How usable is El Capitan today? Let's do some web browsing. I did this last time, and we're going to do it this time as well. So you can see Safari 11 does actually render everything fine. So I've had no issues so far, it looks like. it's The issue with Safari 11 is with macOS Big Sur, they released Safari 14, which allowed you to play videos at higher than 1080p on YouTube. So if I go, and let's just say watch my most recent video here. I'm screen recording, obviously, so that kind of makes this worse, but it runs videos videos just fine, LCAP Safari is perfectly fine, and if you want a more up-to-date web browser, you got Google Chrome, that still runs, the latest version of it will still run on El Capitan, so there's no worries there. Now if you want to run, let's just say, Steam, or Discord, or GIMP, <laughs> let's just say these, these utilities I use all the time, the latest versions of all of these will run on OS X LCAP, which is kind of cool. Discord requires LCAP as a minimum. GIMP requires Mavericks, I don't remember what Steam requires, but it does run on LCAP. So let's say you want to run 
iMovie or GarageBand. Those versions still do work. iMovie is very unstable and it doesn't run very well on this computer because it doesn't really run well on my Mac Pro. So I'm not even going to try that. But let's say you want to use like GarageBand to make music or something like that if it wants to load. The latest version of GarageBand that you'll be able to run actually does have the modern design that is not used today but is the version before the Big Sur redesign. So it fits the aesthetic of El Cap. And this version of GarageBand works perfectly fine. There are no issues with it. I've never run into an issue, even on this Hackintosh, which is old, 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 and is still running this perfectly fine. So, good to know if you need to use GarageBand for anything. You don't get the latest version, you get a very recent version. Let's just say and clear this. There's that. If you want to run GarageBand, you absolutely can on this computer. But you absolutely can on LCAP as well. If you have a more powerful LCAP 10 machine, you can expect more power than out of this computer. No, I don't want to save. Now, what are some upsides to LCAP that newer macOS does not actually have? Well, since it's L cap, you can actually run 32-bit applications, which is exactly why I have this PC set up, is to run macOS and run 32-bit applications. So like I can run iWeb, which I'm not going to open right now, and I can run some other 32-bit apps, like some Steam games that are 32-bit only, they can run on this computer. Obviously, I just boot into Windows for it, but would I recommend that you use El Capitan in 2021? Honestly, if you're still using L cap and it's still doing everything you need it to do, it is 100% okay, in my opinion, to keep using it. LCAP, honestly, is one of my favorite versions of macOS, just because it runs on a huge variety of old machines. Like I said, it runs on this HP, and it has a pretty modern design that I personally still love. And one more thing to mention before I actually wrap up this video that this computer does not support, but I want to bring up anyways, LCAP does actually support handoff. It does support AirDrop 2 and 1, which newer macOS versions do not. So if you have a proper Wi-Fi card, let's say you have a 1.1 1 .1 Mac Pro, and you pop in one of those new Wi-Fi cards for newer iMacs, like 2012, 2013 iMacs, if you pop in one of those Wi-Fi cards, you'll get AirDrop and Handoff, and if you have a newer macOS version, you'll even get Unlock with Apple Watch, but LCAP does not support that. That makes this really cool. So if you ever need AirDrop 2, have LCAP to do that, and even if you don't have an AirDrop 2 compatible card, a lot of older Wi-Fi cards will actually fully support AirDrop 1 as well if you can get them to work with LCAP. Some third-party ones require texts, but so yeah. That's about it for this video. If you guys still use LCAP or at least still have a system that uses LCAP or heck, if you've even used it in your lifetime, leave a comment and just give your experiences because when I first really got serious into macOS, which was really, that was like 2016, LCAP was the latest macOS version that was out there. It was like January of 2016 is when I actually start getting into more Mac stuff. The first version that I really used a lot was El Capitan. So I really do have a lot of fond memories of this operating system just because it was like, I got a 2010 MacBook and I ran El Cap on it. I know I'm getting on a tangent here, but I don't care. <laughs> So that's one reason why I like LCAP, but maybe you don't so much. Leave a comment down below. Just tell me what your experiences are with LCAP, if you do have any. I'd love to hear it. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you guys liked it, then hit the like button. Get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later.